to the lectern, Max Jordan, Chairman of the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative and Board of Director at Jampro. Thank you, Jackie, for that introduction. It is such an honor to be here today to launch this significant event and also to speak alongside such, in, such an incredible panel. Prime Minister, the most honorable Andrew Holness. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator, the Honorable Auburn Hill. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Doctor, the Honorable Nigel Clark. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Honorable Olivia Grange. Opposition Junior Spokesperson on Sports and Entertainment, Dr. Olivia Rose. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Mrs. Sansia Bennett Templer. Permanent Secretary within the Office of the Prime Minister, Ambassador Rocky Mead. My fellow Board of Directors of JAMPRO and Oversight Committee members, President of JAMPRO, Mrs. Shillette Cox. Film Commissioner Jackie Jackson. Key stakeholders from the industry and friends from the media and everyone joining online, welcome. It's, it's, it's such a wonderful day. Just a few months ago, the JAMPRA Board of Directors, under the charge of Minister Aubin Hill and our Chairman Mark Myers, approved our corporation's four-year strategic plan. Our plan outlines eight strategic goals, which is aimed at driving our economy through export, investment, and local linkages. A central theme in our plan, which transcends all of our target sectors, is the development and promotion of Jamaican goods and services to export markets across the world. A key pillar in our plans is the significant growth of the film industry. While Jampro has been a champion of the film industry since the inception of the Film Commission in 1984, we still believe much more can be done to support and invest in local content creation, content that depicts our incredible landscape, content that shares our vibrant culture and brings our stories to the world. Our board at Jamper is also acutely aware that destination filming, attracting large production and distribution houses to film here in Jamaica, has the potential to unlock tremendous value and economic impact. Films such as Bob, Bob Marley, One Love, which premiered last week, brings with it to Jamaica thousands of jobs for Jamaicans. It injects needle-moving levels of, in of spend in the local economy. It trains and upskills our local technicians and our local talent. And it has potential to generate US dollars worth of millions of dollars in media exposure for our country. And so, since our government announced the budget allocation of $1 billion towards the support of Jamaica's screen-based industry, my president and her team have put in tremendous work to operationalize what we are calling the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative, JSDI for short, will be managed and operated through JAMPRO. And so far, a public-private sector committee has been assembled and established to govern JSDI and will report through the board of JAMPRO. The objective of this committee is, is clear, crystal clear. It's to serve as the governing body, providing direction, guidance, and leadership to ensure the effective implementation of the JSDI, to ensure it is a success, and to provide a return on the investment that the government of Jamaica is making. The oversight committee will go one step further to establish an independent expert evaluation committee. This committee will ensure transparency in the evaluation of applications that are submitted for JSDI funding. The establishment of this initiative has been a long time coming and a long time in the making. And I'd like to recognize the vision of our government, the efforts of the various ministries who collaborated on this, our team at JAMPRO, who are always agitating and facilitating to get the job done. And of course, the industry stakeholders whose feedback has been invaluable to the process. All of our collective efforts have brought us here today to launch this significant event, which we hope will be a key pillar 
in the growth of the film industry. So on behalf of JAMPRO, on behalf of the Oversight Committee, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being a part of our mission to support Jamaica's continued economic growth and to ensure Jamaica becomes the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Thank you all. Thank you for that overview, Mr. Jardim, and for the moment we have all been waiting for. Uh, Mrs. Shillette Cox, JAMPRO President, will give us an overview of what is the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to recognize our Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, my Minister of Industry, Investment, and Commerce, Senator the Honorable Aubin Hill, the Minister of Finance and Public Service, Dr. the Honorable Nigel Clark, the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, the Honorable Olivia Grange, the Opposition Junior Spokesperson on Sports and Entertainment, Dr. Olivia Rose, my Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Mrs. Sansia Bennett Templo, Mr. Max Jardim, the Chairman of the JSDI Oversight Committee and JAMPRO Board Member. Other members of the JAMPRO Board and members of the JSDI Oversight Committee, team members from JAMPRO, stakeholders from the industry, and guests and friends online, members of the media in the room. It is a very exciting time in Jamaica's film industry. And it is beyond exciting at this moment, as we launch the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative, or what we fondly call the JSDI. This has truly been a journey of a thousand miles. And on behalf of the film industry, members of the JAMPRO team, and the millions of people that will soon enjoy Jamaican stories, I must thank the agitation of my minister and the confidence of the Minister of Finance, the dedication of the Minister of Culture and Entertainment, and of course, the leadership of our Prime Minister for the bold step that the government of Jamaica has taken in support of this industry with this unparalleled economic investment. Over the last few months, as you heard Director Jardim mention, JAMPRO has been working with key ministries and film stakeholders to build on work that has been done and waiting, just waiting on the opportunity that could only come with funding. One billion dollars is by no means small change. And we are very aware as an agency and as an industry that to whom much is given, much is expected and we look forward collectively to rising to that challenge. And with that in mind this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the overview of the vision as we roll out the JSDI with some of the key program elements and the next steps in the next few months. The Jamaica Screen Development Initiative offers financial support to Jamaican-made screen-based production. And what's important about that is the Jamaican made and the screen based. So it's not just any story. There are Jamaican stories made in Jamaica. And the support is not just the film based productions, but screen based because animation is a big part of what the Jamaican industry is calling for. We want to see an industry that allows for the creation of high quality, commercially viable content not just for domestic markets, but for global markets. And we say commercially viable, and our industry says, but Shalette, what about the stories that need to be told about Jamaican music and Jamaican art and Jamaican culture? We're going to make sure that they're a part of the commercially viable productions that come out of this industry. We want to give support to the various stages of production because we want to meet the industry where they are and not everybody is at the end ready to 
produce and market and distribute. They are at the development stage, they're at the production stage, the post-production stage, and we want to support all stages. Ultimately, we want to inject expenditure in the economy, we want to grow Jamaican jobs, and we want to increase the technical capacity of Jamaicans to produce commercial and commercial opportunities in film and entertainment. We want economic diversification and the ability to leverage infrastructure investments. We have so many infrastructure projects that want to come to Jamaica, but they first need to know that Jamaica has a real film industry. Today, we can tell them that we are starting that path. We want to offer Jamaicans the support necessary to leverage co-production treaties. We've had co-production treaties for over two decades that Jamaicans have never been able to use. But today with this fund, we will start that. And finally, we want to create a platform for Jamaica to compete globally as a destination for film. And I have to share this. Last week, as you all know, Bob Marley One Love premiered in Jamaica, the first premiere. And within the first 12 hours of the premiere, based on numbers that I've seen, the premiere generated over a million pounds in media value in the UK. And in the first 24 hours, 1.9 billion in the US. That's with the first 24 hours. We didn't measure or haven't measured yet what happened after London premiere and the Hollywood premiere hasn't happened yet. That's just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm sure if Minister Bartlett was here, he would be very happy because a lot of that is going to translate into people that now want to visit the place that these stories are told. So under the JSDI, what is being allowed? Feature films, all genres, documentaries, any kind of movie, romance, um, horror, action, you write it, it's a good story, and we will do our best to support it. Short films as well, because that's a section of the industry that drums up, attracts funding, and attracts visibility. Animated shorts, web series, episodics, and miniseries made not necessarily for TV or the big screen, but potentially the internet. Reality and unscripted content. And on the flip side, what is not allowed are music videos, advertisements and commercials, news, sports, and dailies, work that captures another art form, so filming of theater productions and so on, podcasts, live streams, and influencer content. In terms of the pro program details, we are focused primarily on growing local content. And that spans the five stages of production. For development, we're focusing on research, script writing, securing talent and partners, and raising financing. At the production stage, we're focusing on the preparation and delivery of principal photography, including scouting, talent, servicing, film scoring, and equipment. And then completion, or post-production, which is the stage that brings the production to picture lock, rough cut, and final cut. Once a production is done, or once a short is done, we'll also be offering support to participate in international film festivals, as well as market attendance. Support is also available for visibility and acclaim, the opportunity to monetize, and funding marketing and distribution. On the destination filming side, that's now the side where international films want to come to Jamaica, we'll be utilizing the fund as a production rebate. And that's going to be very important as we start to put ourselves forward as real competition in a growing global market. The funding categories each have different limits that we're going to be looking at in terms of the maximum contributions. And it will be a mix of loan, loans and grants 
as we roll out the support. Most of them will be grants. The production rebate is the only one that will be a rebate. It means that the company or the production house, which can be both Jamaican and overseas based once it meets the criteria, will be allowed to spend their funds up front and then based on an audit, we will refund as a rebate. So if I hone in on the four major categories that we expect the local fi film industry to really apply for, there are some mandatory criteria that we put forward. As I said, first and foremost, this is a Jamaican initiative. And so the indi an individual applicant must be a Jamaican citizen or a person ordinarily resident in Jamaica. Companies submitting applications must, have, must be registered in Jamaica with at least a 51% Jamaican ownership. They must be registered on the National Registry of Entertainment and Creative Industries Practitioners. One of the big things that Minister Grange has been trying to do for the last decade is to bring some level of formality to an industry that can be dispersed. And we want to identify who these people are so that we can understand their challenges and understand how we can better support. And so that will be a critical element. I'm sure Minister Clark will appreciate that every recipient of these funds must be tax compliant. <laughs> and finally, we must recognize, and it's a part of my ministry, intellectual property rights. There will be nobody that is funded to produce a movie that they have no rights to produce. Some of the evaluation criteria that we'll be looking for under these same four categories is the track record of the applicant. What have they done so far? What do they have the capacity to do? What does the team look like? Is this a viable business? And we understand, I know the industry has said to us, particularly for development category, that you're not always gonna find a tick on all of these boxes. And so there's a category for emerging script writers that we'll also be looking at. The feasibility of the project plan. Can you do what you say you're going to do when you say you, you're going to do it? Do you have the rest of the financing ready to do the activity that you're gonna do? That financing plan is important. And of course, does the product or the project itself have creative and commercial merit? Commercial attractiveness and viability. Is this the kind of product that will sell? Is this the do you have a strong marketing strategy? Is there a demonstration of market interest in the product? What does your business plan look like? And of course, last and by no means least, what are the potential benefits to Jamaica and the Jamaican economy? How many people are you gonna employ? How much money are you gonna spend? How much of this production will be in Jamaica versus outside of Jamaica? And what is the social and cultural value of the story being told to the Jamaican story? So those are the high level criteria. Over the next month, what we are inviting persons to do is continue the conversation to refine the program details. And we're inviting people to talk to Jampro, talk to the various stakeholders that lead your industry associations so that together we can create a product that is reflecting the needs of the industry. And so on the 28th of February and the 2nd of March, we will have two clarification sensitization sessions coming out of those discussions with the final look and feel of the program. The call for applications will be launched on the 18th of March, just in time for budget spend to start on April 1. <laughs> the call for application closes on the 28th 
of April. So we're starting the discussions now so that people can start to pull together their applications, but they get a clear six weeks to submit an application. Then we will go through the process evaluation and approvals with a 15th of August deadline for notification of awardees. There's a lot more I could say, but I have limited time. For more information, we will be updating the relevant pages on the JAMPRO website at dobusinessjamaica.com, and you can use the Contact Us feature to submit any questions, suggestions, thoughts that you have. You can also call us at JAMPRO at 888-INVESTJA or email us at jsdi at dobusinessjamaica.com. Thank you very, very, very much, everybody, for your attention today. Thank you, of course, my ministers, prime minister, for the support, for the confidence that you have shown in this industry. And for everybody else, let's get this done. Thank you.